In my previous tutorial, I showed you a method on how to paint skin. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to take it one step further by using the image. Now, I'm still not going to do any kind of projection painting. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just use this as a reference for the paint this. So, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to split my view. Oop. All right. Split the view and go into the node editor. And I'm going to go to the compositor, which is this one, and click backdrop. I'm going to hit N to get rid of this. And I'm going to zoom in. Hit shift space on the keyboard for the maximize this view if you need to. And I'm going to just right click on this and delete. Hit shift A. Shift A. Add an image. And I'm going to use that background image. Now, I'm also going to add a viewer node. Drag this over here. Give it a second. It had to load up. Okay. So now, as you can see, this is very good that we actually have the background image, but it's kind of a little too close. So what I'm going to do is hit V on my keyboard to zoom out. I'm going to hold Alt, middle mouse click, and move over. Hold. Okay. So now that we have our background image, I'm going to add a color, hue saturation value node. What this is about to do, this is going to bring out the color zones that I talked about in the first tutorial. So basically, the only way how to do this is just bring up the saturation all the way, and voila. Now, while that's loading up, as you can see, all of the reds, let me zoom in, hold Alt V, well, hold Alt and press V for the zoom in. And as you can see, all of her reds, orange, and yellows are peeking through the skin. So this is exactly what we're going to need. So here's Shift Space. And as a matter of fact, you can just join these two windows together now because you won't need that anymore you got what you need out of that you're going to add another image you're going to click on the icon you're going to click viewer node and what this is going to do that same image that we just saw brings it right up bring the opacity up and if you want to you can match those two up it's really a personal purpose on that one i think i am and just collapse this up and hit N to get rid of that. Turn on my screencast keys. Okay. So now if you hold S, I'm gonna switch to the mouse. If you hold S and you just drag over it, your image, you can see that it's sampling the colors. So this is exactly what this whole tutorial is gonna be based off of color sampling. So you take that red and make sure that your brush strength is a 0.1 and just go in and everywhere that you see red you just start painting now if you have a front and a side view you can use both front and side view or you can choose one or the other since this photo only has one view I'm going to just simply use the front view just go ahead and start painting Resize the brush if you need to. There's no specific size you need, it's just mainly the strength. So, everything, because I'm using the front view, everything around here is going to be red as opposed to the last tutorial. Now, I'm gonna stop right quick. Now, as you can see, when I paint around the ear, this part of the ear, the back of the ear, and kind of the so what side, it's not getting painted. A good simple way to get around this is to go to options, and turn off a clue, call, and normal, and go back to it, and then just go ahead and continue painting. Now, what this do is just basically go through it and it also paints on the opposite side which is quite handy again you want to make sure that it's not too pink and as you can see it's 
got a little too much right here but that's okay there's gonna be that way okay I'll go back in the front view move over now I'm going to sample another color I sample around here. Got a lot of bright oranges. And the same thing. You just go zoom in. As you go to town. Now you don't want to get too crazy with it because you got to keep in mind that the lips are also red. So I had to go back in and paint those. Kind of a little reddish. But for now, you're going to focus on these orangish colors. There you go. And now, as you can see in the reference image, around this cheek area on both sides and around the bridge of the nose and somewhat the forehead, there isn't too much color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to improvise. And I'm going to use the same color that I'm using for the nose, for the bridge of the nose. I'm sorry, the side of the nose. And just see you going. Again, this is personal preference on that part. You can use whatever color you want. You can even use yellow. Okay. Nah sample the color from the neck and just rinse and repeat now since we're dealing with the neck I'm gonna bring my brush up a bit go back in the front view continue on Now, keep in mind that the darker the skin tone is, the more you actually have to use red and orange and yellow, the more deeper, I should say, it'll be. All right. It's actually turning out pretty good. A little bit better than the first one. Yeah. That's a good thing. Okay. I'm just going to take some of this dark orange and just bring it into the face like that. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to sample that red for the lips. So this is the deeper red. Just so go in there. Now keep in mind that with this one, the difference between this one and the original one that I showed you is that it varies from person to person as well as skin tone to skin tone. So. The color zones in her face may be different from a color zone in someone else's face. But that's what happens when you use reference image. Got a little bit of around there. Kind of look like some smudged up lipstick. But that's okay. We'll get by with it. Okay. So. There you have it. So just like in the other one. I'm gonna bring up the white. Brighten it up a bit. Move some of that saturation away from it while keeping the tones. Now, I'm gonna bring up the original image. Oop. Hide this one. Wrong one. Hide this one. Okay, now from this part, you can sample any part of the skin color. And since that area is around the forehead, you're going to do the same thing for this one. Just go over it. But instead of using 0.1, I'll bring the brush up to about 0.3.
and we'll just go like that. Now this is very tedious because you have to constantly go around it and at the same time you don't want to have the strength too high otherwise it will be unacceptable it'll look kind of horrible and sample the skin color from the lips this old man let's just go over that get a little bit from the highlights actually right here no maybe right here okay that color right there will be used for the entire skin I'm just gonna go over everything but not too much because we want to still keep those color zones that we painted in peeking through Now, as you can see, oops, apologies there. All right. Now, as you can see, they're not quite matching up, but it's very, very close, somewhat. Now, you don't want to use any whites from there, and you don't want to use any blacks because when painting skin or any kind of texture, you don't want to have any highlights or shadows in your texture unless you're doing a stylized character, which this also could be used and applied to a stylized character. But that's out of the scope of this tutorial. So, there's one more thing I'm going to show you. A little trick that I've picked up and actually kind of created on my own. In programs like ZBrush, there's a spray brush that they use that also has a skin alpha. Now, I've seen some of the skin alphas from Pixelogic.com. You can download those and use them for free. So what I did, a little workaround for painting skin just use a texture mask change that to view plane hit new I'm gonna split this window again change this one to properties and you're gonna click this little checkerboard right here in the corner and that's gonna bring up your brush preset with your brush Hit open and let's see where it's at. Okay, as you can see, this is just a simple pour brush. It's basically pores number five from Pixelogic. So all you have to do is just basically download it. It's nothing fancy, it's not even really custom made, it's just the same brush. And all I did was to basically remove the background for it. So open that up and zoom in. And now I'm gonna just maximize this view. And now, when I paint skin, what this does, gives you that skin texture that you need. It's a quick little simple trick. It actually gets the job done. Now, you can take that one step further by going into your stroke and changing it to airbrush. I'm just going to undo that real quick. Okay. Now, when I start painting now, same thing. And this also comes in handy if you want to use, say, freckles or anything like that. You can use the airbrush. And use this kind of texture. Now, as you can see, going away from the image and just painting actually looks a bit more real go back to front view and you can also use this for when you want to use the color zones bring that back down to point one Eh. Alright, hit control. Do it like that. And as you can see, it gives you that little texture that you need.
to keep her from looking kind of stylized. Now, if you're going to use this kind of method when you use the white, you don't use a texture for the add the whites. Or to desaturate the colors. You get rid of that. And that way, the effect is not ruined. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.